Hello, hello. Before we get started, please just close your eyes for five seconds and think that you are a security person. And all of a sudden, you get pulled into a random call by a 20 or 30 year old something consultant who tells you that, dear sir, in order to build your CMDB, we need admin access. Ouch. And indeed, that is what we're going to speak about today. The very, very important topic of ITOM and security. So buckle up guys, because this is going to be a fun discussion. So as you guys can see, I am working from a houseboat today. And I'd just like to mention a small disclaimer before we get started, which is that some of the things today are personal observations and experiences. And my name, it is Alexander Jungström. I work as the managing director for Einar and Partners. And throughout my career, I have been exposed to approximately 30 larger enterprises in these type of security discussions. So I hope that you will find my experiences useful. And should you have any questions or opinions, well, you know what to do. Drop a comment below. So one very common thing which I see being repeated again and again is that consultants in security discussion tend to think that it is an us versus them thing. We need to convince the security team. It is only the security team that we need to get past and so forth and so on. And yeah, this is of course madness. The security team is there for a reason. They need to do their due diligence and ensure that they have done everything in their power to stay compliant with any security policies. So really, it's about understanding their perspective and finding a common ground together as a team. And that will just make every discussion much, much easier if you show them that you genuinely care about the security. They are not a hurdle to get past. They are a very, very important step in the process. So include them super early already from day one when it comes to item discussions. Actually, from a philosophical perspective, security is hugely interesting. And for me, it's always about finding a balance. A balance between manageability versus the value you get out of it. So let's say you're going to discover a network. You're going to build a CMDB. Of course, in theory, you can lock it down to the most granular bits and pieces and apply super, super advanced security policies to it all. And maybe, maybe sometimes that is required. But sometimes it's also about finding a compromise. So everything is not black or white. You might have more sensitive parts of the network where you apply one methodology and then other parts of the network where it's less strict, you can have another methodology. And finding the middle ground between these two worlds is very, very important. So what I like to speak about first, if we're speaking about methodologies, is actually the agentless discovery approach. So let's have a look here. So I'm going to try and summarize this security model in front of you in three minutes or less. And on the very bottom side, you have the ease of management, starting from quite easy to quite complex. And the security model is based on four levels. And the first level, it starts with a low hanging fruit. Here we tell our customers that, okay, don't use WMI for Windows, but switch over to WinRM per default, and of course, secure PowerShell. For Linux machines, use SSH keys instead of username and password. And for the mid servers, then make sure to do some mid server hardening, meaning patching and keeping them up to date. For level two, that is where it really gets interesting. So I've noticed a lot of trends that people are lazy, they want discovery to run easy, so they only have a few credentials. But actually, from a security perspective, that is a no-go. It's much, much better to segment the credentials and make sure that the credentials are only valid on certain subnets or on certain domains, of course. And finally, for the very sensitive equipment and machines, I always recommend to use just enough administration. Uh, I will put a link in the description below what that means from ServiceNow perspective. Level three, um, that is not a solution which is built into ServiceNow, but it is something which you would need to construct yourself. Uh, we have helped customers do this. And what that actually means is that you have specific time windows, for example, 
Every Sunday at this time window, we're gonna discover the Windows machines in this particular subnet or in this particular location. And only then are the credentials active. Any other given time, they are remaining inactive. And that is, of course, um, very powerful from a security perspective. And finally, level four, that is where you actually rotate the credentials on a daily basis and you have not the credentials stored in service now, but you rather have them stored in an external credential store. And I know this sounds very attractive, uh, but actually having a privileged access management solution, it is a different beast to tackle. Um, but if you're already using it or if you're planning to using it, then just be aware of that you can connect it to ServiceNow Discovery as well. So these are the four layers um, or the four levels rather. And as you can see, there is a lot of wiggle room and there are a lot of, of possibilities which you can utilize. So keep the security model in mind when you are doing your agentless discovery. All right, all right, all right. I know what you're thinking, but Alex, why do we need local admin access for Windows? And this is a simple question with a simple answer. So in order to discover the running processes and the network connections for all the logged in users to a particular Windows machine, you actually need local admin privileges. Um, this is a design choice by, by Windows. It, it is not a requirement from ServiceNow, but it is actually related to Windows security. But I always guess it gets this question and yeah, I just wanted to throw it out there. That is the reason why ServiceNow requires local admin for Windows machines. One thing which we haven't spoken about yet is what are the options to the agentless discovery in ServiceNow? Well, you might already be aware of that in the latest release, then an agent-based approach is also offered. And actually we created a video series about this, which I also will put a link in the description below. Um, of course, at this given time when this video is being recorded, then the agent-based approach, it comes with certain limitations. Nonetheless, it is a very, very valid approach that you can use in combination with the agentless one. So have a look at it and uh, definitely consider it um, as part of your discovery rollout plan. So to end this video, um, I think we can conclude that there is a lot of flexibility when it comes to ServiceNow discovery and how you approach the topic of security. Granted, we have not touched upon the technical bits and pieces in depth. There is a lot more to be covered from a process side. But as a starting point, I hope that you found this useful and that you realize just how much you actually can work towards a more secure discovery rollout and strategy. And of course, as always, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe and keep on the loop on our YouTube channel in order to stay up to date on the latest item stuff. Thank you so much for watching.